So in today's workshop, we're going to talk all things how to master technical analysis in seven easy steps. So this is not going to be some hour long tutorial. I'm going to get straight to the point and tell you what you need to know to master this concept. So no fluff, nothing like that. And even after eight years of trading, I still use these basic concepts till this day. So they are very valid. They are very useful. And I hope you guys find that they are useful. And if you do, make sure to give this video a thumbs up. Before we dive in, I do have two freebies that if you are interested after this video, I highly recommend you go check out. Free futures trading workshop, all things how to trade futures with a small account, prop firms, trade copiers, all of that is covered. And then I also just created a free trader quiz that'll match your personality type with the best trading strategy for you. I've had a ton of positive feedback on it and people think it's really cool. So make sure to check that out as well. So let's dive into today's workshop. What is technical analysis and how does it work? That is step number one for this workshop because you have to understand the definition and what it is before we dive into the key concepts. And if you already are familiar with this, just bear with me. I promise it won't take too long. So TA aka technical analysis is basically the art of reading the chart. That is what I consider the simple definition, but we're just going to use a basic Investopedia definition, which is the study of historical market data, including price and volume. So what this means is traders use technical analysis to go back and study previous price action of a stock or ETF, whatever you are trading in order to predict future price movement. And when I say predict, it doesn't mean that you can tell the future. Nothing is ever guaranteed guaranteed, especially in trading. However, we are all about getting an upper hand and an edge. And so if you can see where something previously potentially caused support or resistance, supply or demand zones were created, then you might find that useful for when we retrace to those key levels. And so that brings me to step number two, which is the first thing you should be doing when you are jumping on the charts and wanting to dive into technical analysis. That is using the zoom out method to assess larger time frames. So if you ever hear a trader say, zoom out, larger point of view, larger picture, time frames, whatever, look left. What they're referring to is you need to be assessing and analyzing larger time frames first before you dive into the smaller ones. And this is actually where I see traders go wrong a ton is they are day traders on smaller time frames and they just neglect the larger trend or larger point of view. And this can oftentimes bite them in the butt because they don't see what the bigger traders are seeing because very large traders, institutions, banks, and stuff like that still pay attention to the larger time frame. Now, if you're talking about algorithms, I don't really agree that algorithms pay attention to larger time frames, which is why some traders find it easier to trade them because swing trading on larger time frames can cancel out all that noise and prevent you from getting stopped out as easily. When it comes to day trading and scalping smaller time frames, you are competing against algorithms, which makes it very, very hard to stay in a trade for very long without getting stopped out or faked out. So that is why it's important to always assess the larger trend by zooming out. And so these are some of my favorite time frames. And when I say larger point of view, typically I'm starting one year, one day, working my way into 180 day, four hour, and then 20 day, one hour. Anything under that is more of a closer point of view. So these three are the ones that I start out with. Now for charting, I personally use Thinkorswim. I've just used that since day one. I know some people prefer trading view, but Thinkorswim is definitely my go-to platform. I'm just very familiar with it. So if you hit this drop down menu, this is where I can change my different time frames and as you can see we're right now on the one year one day so if you are going to assess a stock and study the chart typically you want to start here so you're probably like well what am i looking for especially if you're new and that brings me to step number three which is you want to identify key market structure plus trend so when i say market structure you're basically trying to see are we in a bearish flow or a bullish flow meaning are we making higher lows or higher highs? And so just looking at this gold chart right here, you can see just starting right here, this was a low that was printed, and then we had a higher low. We had another higher low and another higher low. However, right in here is technically speaking where trends started to change. I wanna make this very clear. Technical analysis in general is very subjective because you can draw things where you want to. You can draw trends where you want to. So there's not a hard and set rule for how to do this. And that's why I called it the art of reading the chart. Everyone does it a little differently, but the idea is to see 
majority of what other people see. You don't want to be an outlier seeing something completely different. You do want to be seeing what other traders might be seeing. And so my personal trend line here would be right in this area because once we popped up here and we settled, this is technically, in my opinion, where we started to form higher lows. So I like this trend versus something like this. So, you know, like I said, it's very subjective. Some traders might say, no, that's the trend line. We technically broke here. But again, that is basically up to you. So where I see trend forming is right here. And you can see we were making higher lows on the way up. However, we started to break this trend line right in here and it was not a clean break. It was a break and then a pop back up and a break down below again. Now we're retesting, but this is still important for me to know if I'm planning on day trading gold because I need to understand market structure from a larger point of view. And you can see we were getting weaker and weaker as we kept testing this trend line, meaning that this trend might not be as guaranteed to hold as it has been in the past. Usually the more times you were touching a trend line over time, the weaker it will get. So market structure, we are making higher lows until we eventually start to break down. But what will be really key is if we can break this previous higher low here, which is also potential key support zone. So anytime I'm drawing support, I would like to turn that green. And so I'm going to do that here. So if we continue making lower highs now underneath this trend line, you can see there's another opposing trend that has formed, then there is a potential that we can come down to the support level. So you see how understanding that bigger picture is important. And we already started in on this topic, which is number four, and that is identifying key levels using support and resistance. So I still start from the zoom out method to understand where do we potentially see support or resistance forming. But let's go ahead and start to work our way into that 180 day, four hour time frame. So from here, we have our previous support right here, which I actually might move that up a little bit just because I like to catch as many points as possible. And you can see we bounced off it a few times here. So I'm going to move the support up to 1993. And other than that, where's potential resistance? We had some old resistance right in this area right here. So if I want to get as many touch points as possible, I can draw that right here. Now you can see something important happened. Old resistance became new support. So this red line is now going to turn green for me. I'm going to zoom in here, double click, and I'm going to change that to green because again, old resistance turned new support, which is a bullish sign on the closer time frame. However, larger time frame, we still are pretty bearish because we're underneath this trend line and we're breaking below. And this is oftentimes where traders can start to get confused because from the larger point of view, you're probably like, well, I want to look for a short because we're breaking trend again. That's valid. And you can only wait for that trade, especially if you're trading off of a larger time frame like this. But for me, I will trade both directions regardless because I like to see both sides of that trade, bullish and bearish. So I understand that since we broke this trend line, we should be leaning bearish entries on trades. Now, that is why this past Friday, we took a nice short entry off of this retracement right in here on gold. And I was prepared for that short entry based off of my technical analysis. And just so you can see, I'm not making that up. We can pull Discord up yesterday. So today's Saturday, yesterday was Friday at 8.28 a.m. You can see I was watching for rejection of 20.39.40 for a short entry. And we hovered there for a little bit, but eventually ended up rejecting and had a super nice retrace back down to both of my targets, which was trend and then another Fib retracement target near 20.32.80, which you will see that trade as we get to our closer time frame of the five day, five minute. But right now we're still in that 180 day, four hour. So the short entry didn't happen until we retraced up, right? So I was waiting for that pop to enter, but looking left and zooming out would have shown you that this previous resistance could have turned support, giving you a potential long entry right here. And so 180 day, four hour, let's move into the 20 day, one hour to see what else we can find. I see another trend line as well. I'm going to go ahead when I'm moving in, I'm going to remove some of these trend lines just so I don't get a really, really cluttered chart. I'm not a fan of that. Each time frame I zoom in, if I already understand the bigger picture, I'll remove some of those different lines so I can have a very clean chart for the new time frame. Again, this is preference and up to you. So with the 20 day, one hour, I am seeing a trend develop here of lower lows. So you can see we had a low, came back up, another lower low, 
another lower low and another one. So I'm going to connect right here and I see a nice trend line forming, which was another reason that we caught support here. Most likely old resistance turned new support. We also were bouncing on this trend line here. I wouldn't have known that if I wouldn't have been assessing the 20 day one hour. And you can always branch off your trend line. So if some of you were like, well, why didn't you start over here? If you did start over here and you went down all the way, way down there, then that would just be one of your sets of trend lines. So typically I will branch off in different directions. So the fact that we caught support here instead of way down here tells me that there is a new trend forming. So that's why my trend line was here and not way down there. Okay, so I think you guys get the point on you want to zoom out in those larger time frames and you want to assess things like trend and market structure and then start to work your way in. Also, support and resistance is very important. So now let's move into a more advanced topic, which is supply and demand zones. And I just did a full tutorial on supply and demand. So if you are curious on the topic or want to learn more, maybe you're brand new to it, I would highly suggest watching this video after this one. I will link it at the end. So something important about supply and demand zones for me personally, I do not usually draw them over the 20 day, one hour time frame because I don't like older zones. Again, you'd learn more in that guide if you watch that full video that I created. But just for the sake of not making this video too long, let's just start with where we are 20 day, one hour and see if we can identify some key zones here. So these are more based off of rapid movement where support and resistance is just somewhere we've hit multiple times and either held or rejected. So right off the bat, I see rapid movement from this zone right here. So I'm going to go ahead and draw this potential demand zone right in this area. And now you can see we came through this demand zone very rapidly and never caught support. So it's not really a very strong zone. And even we caught resistance when we came back up into it. And then we finally made our way through forming higher support over it here. So later on, it did become a key area of interest. However, just like anything, it's very subjective. Sometimes it could work, sometimes it couldn't. This is why it's really important in trading, especially with technical analysis, to layer on things. You're not just using one thing, but you're using multiple different tools to give you an edge. I also see a potential supply zone right here, which you can see once we did break trend and retrace, we took this short right here, which is what I will show you guys in a minute. That is where we came back to catch support. So just like support and resistance zones can be interchangeable. Example, old resistance became new support. The zones can oftentimes do that too. So I like to use them as areas of interest. And again, I don't think concretely with them. I don't immediately buy or sell when we enter them. I just remember that, okay, there were potential buyers here or sellers here. How are we reacting now that we are re-entering that zone? So from 20 day, one hour, let's go ahead and move into the five day, 15 minute, and then see closely what happened here. So this was the short we took based off of a Fibonacci strategy that I use and it worked wonderfully. As you can see one more time, I had key levels here from Fibonacci retracements and that is where we stalled out. And that is one of the reasons we entered that short. Looking left, you can also see that we had some previous resistance right in here and there we go. And then we also had some previous resistance right in here. So we never went up to this old resistance zone here. So again, that's not really why I took the trade. That was more off of my Fibonacci tools, but let's just look at basic trend here. So we started to form higher lows right here. Again, just to have a clean chart, I'm gonna remove this drawing here because we already know why we caused support and where the uptrend started to form. So we've got some higher lows forming here, which gives us that uptrend, but we branched off this trend line here and now we have an even steeper uptrend. So you can branch off multiple times. Some traders don't, some traders do, depending on how fast they day trade. Since I am a scalper and day trader, I definitely branch off of my trend lines. And we had another one forming here as well. So let's go ahead and move into the five day, five minute time frame. We're gonna remove these zones because they're not useful to me right now. And as you can see, we did catch resistance right here near my Fibonacci retracement level, but we also started to break trend and Again, understanding trend on all different time frames here is very helpful. We broke trend, came down to larger trend. And if you remember from where we started 180 day four hour, that makes sense that the bearish trade worked so quickly so fast because we were still breaking trend from a larger point of view. So waiting for those short entries would have provided a better trade 
based off of that larger point of view. Okay, so we went over some supply and demand zones. Remember, supply and demand is looking for rapid movement off of certain areas. I do have that full tutorial on supply and demand. But the whole point is I usually only use them on the 20 day, one hour and below, not underneath the five day, five minute though. One minute time frames are very rarely used for anything with day trading with me. Um, they're just too choppy and too much noise. So the last thing we're gonna talk about before we go over step number seven is going to be learn basic indicators like RSI and VWAP. These are just two very beginner friendly ones. And so if you are just starting out, you could find them useful and a lot of traders use them. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and clear this chart again, just so we have a clean playing ground. But down here on the bottom, you can see this is RSI for me. So to add that, I would just go up here, type in RSI and I can double click. There we go, double click RSI here to add it on my chart. I don't change any of the settings. RSI is just another tool that you can use. It will help you identify when we are getting into potentially overbought or oversold territory. I personally like to use it for things like divergence, spotting when price action isn't matching RSI. But again, it's just one of those things that you can keep an eye on that, oh, if we are very, very red, I'm not sure if I should immediately buy that stock because we are so overbought on RSI. Maybe I should wait for it to cool off and pull back to a trend line before I look to enter on continuation. Or maybe you're in a short and you're like, I just wanna keep holding and keep holding, but if we're entering that oversold territory in blue, then maybe you want to look to move your take profit or move your stop loss that's protecting the gains you already have down closer just in case we start to find support and reverse up like we did here. As you can see, RSI started to get cold right in here. We reversed up, nice double bottom, and then started to trend to the upside. And then VWAP, you just go up here and type in VWAP. I like to turn off the upper and lower bands. And the simplest way that I can explain VWAP is it's like homeostasis. I used to teach this and incorporate this into a ton of my trainings, but I kind of went away from it over the years just because I feel like there were other ways to identify what VWAP can show you. However, a lot of people still use it. I'm not saying it's not useful. Just don't take trades solely off VWAP. Now, what you can think of VWAP is, like I said, is homeostasis. So if we are too high up and we're breaking trend, it tends to gravitate back towards VWAP. You can see it did it here and here and here. So it's a good attraction point, especially if we are too high off of VWAP or too low off of VWAP. It's a good place to look for a retracement too. All right. And that brings me to step number seven to wrap up this master guide on technical analysis. Like I said, it will be straight to the point, not too long. Now, step number seven is actually going to be a 30 day challenge for you guys. What I want you to do is spend one to two hours per day practicing your craft. This may seem like a ton of time, especially if you work a full-time job and have a busy life, but I was working 14 plus hour days and I was always crazy busy. And every night when I got home, I made it a priority for years and years and years to at least practice technical analysis in charting for one hour per night. Now, yes, this meant I was up exhausted a lot of the times, but over time it paid off. So I want you guys to find at least one hour in your day to practice technical analysis every single day for 30 days. And after that, you guys should be definitely ahead of most traders. Let's check that off because we know that you guys are gonna do that. Now, number two on this challenge is I want you to only pick two to three stocks or ETFs to track per day. Now, this is gonna be helpful because it'll help you learn the personality of that stock. So when you go to trade it, you're gonna know it like the back of your hand. What price levels it likes, what it doesn't like, what a bullish day looks like versus a bearish day. It's just like a person. The more that you date them and hang out with them, you eventually get to know all of their personality traits, what makes them mad, pissed off, how they're acting when they're normal or when they're off. You get to know them very well. Same thing goes for stock trading. And last on this list is I want you to take notes on patterns you see repeatedly. And I definitely forgot the word see in there. But this is important because the whole point of technical analysis is to notice patterns over time. And those patterns can come in handy because if you see them developing in future price action, you're gonna think, oh yeah, I've seen this before. This is how it played out. So there is a likely chance that I could see that pattern play out again. And that is what technical analysis is in trading. You are noticing patterns. You're trying to execute on those patterns, but we never let ourselves get a really, really hard biased on those patterns. We just use it to up our edge. 
So take notes, it definitely does help. I hope you guys enjoyed this guide on technical analysis and how to master it via the seven steps we went over. If you did, make sure to give this video a thumbs up and also make sure to check out those two freebies I have down in the description box down below. If you're interested in following me more on a day-to-day -day basis, my personal account where I post non-trading stuff will be linked below as well as the peachy investor account which is all things trading and this is the perfect time to remind you guys i will never direct message you or send you a friend request they are all scammers please block and report them and that is all for today thank you guys so much for watching and i will see you next time